here. Okay, here's our water pump. This hole right here is what we call our weep hole. What that is for is that allows, <coughs> if the, there's a seal in here, that if it goes bad, it would leak into the gear case if it didn't have this. So if you see water dripping out of this, that means the water pump needs replaced. There's an O-ring right here that seals this to the, the pump housing. I put some silicone on it already, so that basically needs to be installed. But we have to make sure that we have backlash on our gears inside here. So once I get that in there, I'll show you how to do that. Pretty simple to install these. Put it down the right way. Let's get that gear to line up. It pops right in there. Put my bolts in. And they torque to 22 to 28 foot pounds. Granch, it's already set there to it. Torque that and check them. This probably should have had a new little ring, but. Okay, the next thing, we need to make sure we have backlash, and the only way to do that is to pull this piece off. We're going to see if it will come off on this one. They get pretty stuck. Oh, looks like it's going to... that from keep that sealed okay see how rusty that is we'll take and clean that up with a buffer before we put it back on usually it's not an issue because we're gonna put a new pump on I could put a dial indicator on this to see if I actually have backlash, but I can feel it. So that's good enough. It's good to go. It's super important to have backlash on this this gear. <clears throat> if we don't, um, we get a, another pump essentially. You can see I silicone this. It really should have a new O ring. Um, I usually don't run water in them, so I'm not too concerned. That goes in there fairly decent. Put my water neck back on. This would be the lower radiator hose here that would connect to the radiator. This goes to the oil cooler. If you put silicone on there, it sure makes it nice for the next guy to get it. Here's my oil cooler housing. Got O-rings here. I'm gonna lube those with. Um, should replace those every time. But, um, they're not bad, but they're not great. Um, here's our oil cooler. This is a plate type cooler because it has plates. Basically the oil pumps through the cooler and the coolant goes around it. There's a gasket goes right here. This drops in here like so. And then on the other side, the block is drilled for O-rings. They're square O-rings that's set in the block and I'll show you where those are. Okay, here's my thermostat housing. Look right on the end of this, it says 190 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then the other's a part number. Basically what happens here though, when the thermostat opens, that spring relaxes and pulls that closed. We could test that by warming up this bulb right here if we wanted to. But the change of seals, and Cat Cummins Detroit doesn't really matter, they're all about the same. Get a heel bar and we're going to pull these seals out. Anytime you change thermostats, that should be done. There we go. Okay, now we got them out. Okay, now we're going to put these what this does, this allows it only to go in so far. And like I said, this will work on a Cat Cummins Detroit, doesn't matter. 
But we want the lip down. So this is going to kind of a booger to get on the first time. Okay, and then we take our hammer. Take a change of pitch. We know what's in there. We're going to do the same thing with the other one. These typically will come with a head kit. Um, you know, we could test the thermostats. Um, the correct way to test the thermostats is to take these and drop them in a boil of, a pot of hot water, you know, on a stove or something, and get the water to the correct temperature and see if they actually open. Because you'll see them, see how that opens there. So, okay, go ahead and stuff these new ones in there. We're ready to install that on the uh, engine. These seals right here are what seal the thermostat housing to the block, so we don't need a gasket or anything there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install our thermostat housing. There's our thermostats are back in it. This would be a temp sender of some sort. That's the outlet to the radiator. Uh, de aeration plug or something. Um, there's a drain there. So basically, just sits up here. All the bolts are the same length. Hills on the housing themselves are what seals the, the housing to the block. So, no need to worry about. You can actually buy just the seals themselves. Um, some of those ex thermostats can get kind of expensive. They're probably close to 50, 60 bucks a piece sometimes. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's not that much. But, okay, they torque the 54 foot pounds. that is on. Okay, one more thing is the coolant bypass hose so that when the thermostats are closed this is where it goes. So I'm going to get this one started down here. This one also usually has special clamps on it. Um, they seem to seal better than, than a worm clamp. This is a hose hook. What it does is it allows me to move my hoses around a little easier. If you really have trouble with them, you can always put uh, furniture polish works really good. This one's stuck. Lots of rust and crap in there. This might cause some ceiling issues. It can be kind of a booger to get in the right spot. There we're moving on. Okay. I'm going to make sure our clamp is over a hump here. There's a hump here. That keeps the coolant hoses on from blowing off. If you don't have those, it can wreak havoc. And I think our cooling system is officially back together. I should put these clamps nicer, but they need...